Catfire also had an extremely short marketing period. It was announced like a month ago. A month and a half before release? What? You don't do that. You gotta announce it, you know, ahead of time. Is it really a month and a half? Ain't it no do promotions well till end of dragons? I keep hearing about that. I keep hearing that they're not very good at marketing. <laughs> Stupid plushie is shaking. Yeah, NCSoft has never marketed their games well. Yeah, I had to go out of my way to, you know, learn about Guild Wars and City of Heroes and Lineage. It's nice that they're changing um, things, you know, like Twitch promotions. That's a good step. Um, the Prime Loot stuff, that kind of helps. The Steam release, that definitely helps. And they gotta do more. Maybe they should look to other MMOs and see how they market their games. You know, look for inspiration. The store was bugged anyways. Oh. There's something I have to tell you. Ritlock. I went into the mists after my sword, but I found something else. Now he's talking about it? It takes him this long to explain what he... Oh my God, Ritlock. But... I found something else. Refugees are pouring in from Alona. If he kills an Elder Dragon, Tyria will never recover. Jackrabbit. I cannot stand in the glory of Balthazar's light. Destroyers? No, Balthazar's minions, maybe. Are you writing this wrong? I just can't. Can't believe one of the gods gave up on us. They cannot escape my wrath. What the hell is that? That looked like some kind of weird, uh, magical mecha thing. Yeah, I, I saw some cannons on that thing and they were like all converging together to make some kind of energy blast. That's some anime shit right there. What? So we're going to Alona. All right, next one, the launch trailer. What happened to you out in the desert? It's a powder keg over there, and that maniac has already lit the fuse. One person. That sounds like Livia. Of war. Is that me? It better not be me. I need my Avengers. We know there's something in the desert that will help us turn the tide against Balthazar. That Elonian so, outfit, though. Will this be your first god fight? Yeah, you. They're back. Okay, all right. Good. I fear he may get the weapon. If he does, the consequences will be. Unpredictable. Who is this guy? We gotta kill a god or what? We cannot defeat him on our own. There's no coming back. We must strike now. The gods have abandoned this world. No more running, Balthazar. Face me. 
That's crazy that the next expansion centers around Balthazar, not the Elder Dragons. I thought there would be like one for each dragon, but that's not the case. That was UVB with the new regional looks? Wait, what? Really? That was, oh, with the new customization stuff. Oh, I thought that was a new character. Ritlock and Kanak is a bromance that needs to happen more often. <laughs> I'm for it. Some really weird stuff going on with his minions, though. I saw some, like, I, I think it's machinery? Huh, God of War machinery. What about this? I want to see the mount stuff, the mount featurette. In Path of Fire, we wanted to build upon the mastery system that we started with Heart of Thorns. Wow, so we we're getting mounts, mounts, you guys! This time Guild Wars 2. Historically, in games, mounts are about traveling fast. To us, mounts are so much more. A phrase we use a lot in the office is the joy of movement. It should feel exciting I heard about that. to move across the alone in desert in a variety of ways. Each mount has its own movement ability, its own places that it can get to and no other mount can really just kind of strengthens that feeling of exploration that we go for in our maps. Mounts are designed to be these companions that you have that are helping you traverse the world, but in addition to that, they're part of our mastery system. So it's additional horizontal progression. The idea here is that the mounts that's themselves cool. are your ally. I like that. They're not just a creature that you're riding. They're a companion that's taking you on this journey. It allows you to get across puzzles in ways that we hadn't thought possible before now. Mount puzzles. The first mount that players get not just mount to races. Is the raptor, which has this enormous leap. It can jump across canyons and over roofs. This can be used to reach areas that might mount be puzzles. Way to a player. Mounts are not really intended to be a combat tool. They're more of a movement tool. But all of the mounts have a single skill that they can use to engage you into combat. The Raptor's engage skill was this tail spin. It can like pull enemies together, so it's really good. I know about that. Yeah, that's cool. Fights. The next mount most players will encounter the hippity hoppity the springer, just kind of like a, a mutant bunny or a slightly cuddlier jackalope. It has this leap that takes it up really high in the air. It's a charged up jump. Mount the jumping puzzles, you okay. Up, the higher up you'll go. And it can also be used to get access to some really fantastic stuff. Oh! The skimmer is a really interesting mount. It's this manta-like creature with undulating wings and a strange mystical vibe. That gets it you over the water. Some distance over the ground. That means he also hovers over things like water or other things that normally would stop your motion. If you're interested in getting to the most forbidding areas, it's going to be really awesome to have the skimmer. The jackal is a beast all unto itself. It's created with magical energy. Remember, the skimmer did not go dust. underwater till its years later. The tool is to blink forward a very short distance, so you can oh. use it to cross short gaps. Unlike the raptor, he's able to change direction in midair, so you can solve certain puzzles that need precise direction of movement. I think there'll be some really interesting things for players to do. Each mount is a tool. Uh, when you come to a space, there's different ways to get through the same places, different ways to approach. There's something really fun just about being in the crystal desert, moving in this way. And that just opens up the possibility. Building places that aren't like oh. anything players have seen in Guild Wars before. That's cool. Oh, I mean, that, that suddenly stopped. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I also heard that the griffins in the sky scale, or at the very least, the griffins were kept a secret. And um, it didn't. No one knew about it until someone found it. Elite specs. You know what? Sure, fine. Elite specs. We'll do elite specs too. Griffin was the hidden mount. A lot of MMO players hate flying mounts. I love flying mounts. I'm not one of those people. I freaking love flying mounts. With Path of Fire, we're offering nine new elite specializations, one for each of the classes. And the idea behind the specialization, it's another way to customize your play style. In a lot of ways, that gets back to what Guild Wars has been about from the beginning. Character progression doesn't just mean getting better, getting more powerful. 
character progression means oh let me answer this question real quick uh flying mounts feel like you take much of the game away by allowing players uh, to fly over content yeah i understand that yeah uh, i i mentioned that why uh, but i guess most people are not like me because i just simply put a rule over myself i don't use flying mounts if i want to explore but people like to take the path of least resistance and they're not psychologically trained that way right yeah. more things that i can do more strategies that i can employ i love doing both i like being on the ground but i also like mounting in a lot of different way path of fire will present you with the options to play the profession that you've known and loved in a new fashion and in doing so shake the world up a bit yeah i'm, I'm excited i'm excited to get my own sky scale and griffin specializes in burning his enemies and conjuring magical tomes that he can use to support his allies there the book nerd gone mad they've got access to all these secret histories and these tomes wait who are these guys the book people who are the book people magical tomes that he can use to support his allies there the book nerd gone mad they've got access to all these oh they're firebrand they're the op class access to new skills really quickly it's going to be giving up instant support for allies in favor of casted support the benefits of guardians taking the firebrand are that you're going to have a lot more focused support available to you the weapon that they're oh. wielding is the axe very offensive up close and personal means of eradicating the enemy you've been entrusted with these secrets and you have to protect them with your life interesting that seems kind of fun one of the most interesting changes is the necromancer who gets the scourge specialization they're, they're the res Palau class Joko and finding this kind of alternate approach to necromancy in the desert so they're there to help protect the souls that joke is trying to take control over what the necromancer is going to do is he's going to give up his death shroud and instead he's going to place his life force onto the earth <laughs> and protect allies from those locations he gets a lot more battlefield control and movement options that the regular necromancer would not have. Praise the Joko. Scourge gets the torch. I need to meet this Joko too. Protecting their allies with it and lighting the way to, well, damnation for their enemies. Huh. The dead eye. Oh wow, wait, what is, what is this? The dead eye. They run with the rifle. The rifle gives them a lot more range. It lets them tackle certain That's problems. That's crazy, you guys. Slowly they'd have to face up front. Who would have thought they that they would put a sniper a rifle class in the game? a particular individual, and then they execute on that. The Deadeye would have me terrified, you know, that there's someone out there stalking me, waiting for me to make a mistake so they can take me down. They're mercenaries, they're assassins, they're trained hunters. Great to have on your side. Don't get them I wish set. they had more, like, survivability when it comes to melee the range, uh, Mirage situations. A very deceptive combatant in I guess that's what the range. utility skills are they for, but, you know. Blend into, basically, whatever their surroundings are, camouflaging themselves so that you can't see them. And while they're doing this, they can strike at you from multiple directions. The other interesting thing about the Mirage is that it has a different dodge mechanic. They have a blur effect that allows attacks to pass through them. Oh, rather yeah. Than, than the, attack. the idea that there are folks who now can. That's right. I heard about this. The desert itself to kind of provide power to their illusions and phantasms. Interesting. I think it's a really cool direction for the Mesmer to step in. I have 180 points uh, that I have not spent on my, so um, on my Mesmer. It's called the Spellbreaker. I can probably and spend them on that. As the name implies, it's that. a warrior who kind of specializes in fighting magic mm -hmm. users. These folks were members of the Sunspear Order, chosen guardians of Alona. When their order was smashed, they picked up stopping Wait, who are these? wizards was the best way to protect people. They wield daggers and they Weavers? have become so ridiculously focused at no, spell breaker. magic that now they're able to actually cut magic off of Oh, warrior class. So they've got these incredibly powerful retaliatory abilities. They've got the ability to just stop skills from working in an area or strip the enemy's boons. You don't just challenge your enemy oh, where they're weak, you challenge them where they're strong. That actually seems pretty cool. Down. Huh. Weaver, this Weaver is what I'm going to play. I'm playing Weaver. Who has decided that they are going to specialize in the desert in wielding multiple This is what I'm taking with me to once. Path of Fire. Elementalists normally cycle through their magic one after the other, but the Weaver is combining them and creating Yeah, that's badass. I love that. to this kind of hybrid magic. Become the like the avatar. Two fire skills, two water skills, and then fifth skill that is maybe like a ninja from naruto juggling you know jutsus the weapon that they're going to be wielding is one that elementalists have long requested uh the sword 
So they will be picking up the access to imbue their blades with sabers of lightning, earthen hilts. Playing the Weaver has this really interesting rhythm. You know what to it? like these yeah, MMOs really are cool. missing? The kind of can... class fantasy they're missing? They're missing something like Gandalf, you know, when in Lord of the Rings where he has a staff in one hand and a sword in the other. I would love that kind of class fantasy in some game. Really surprise your opponents, catch people off guard, and keep a sense of flexibility. Your enemy doesn't know yeah, what you're about battle mage. I think there's something really cool there. Soul Beast. The Soul Beast is our there ranger specialization that allows rangers to combine their spirits with their pet. They become their bear. They become their devourer. They take on the essence of these animals and tear through opponents. They also gain access and so they to the become dagger, melee range? Main hand weapon. Now they can kind of you know, slice and dice with both components, crossing into close range, as well as crippling from a distance. It works really well with some of the new pets. Become the shark. The I'd rather not. In Alona. Renegade. The Renegade is the elite specialization for the Revenant. This is a new legend that they get to channel, and the legend is of Kala Scorchraiser, this Renegade Char. And she kind of bestows Call a Scorch Razor. I never heard of that character. That to overthrow the Flame Legion. And what this kind of manifests as is the ability to ambush opponents. You can summon members of her Char Warband to bolster your allies, or you can fire arrows into a portal into the mist that come out of a different portal behind the enemy. What's really exciting about the Renegade Ooh. is the idea that standing up to powerful, intimidating foes because you know what's right and you know you'll win in the end. Rangers have always been Hollow able to play Smith melee range. True. Yeah, I forgot about that. They take a very clean look at energy, light in particular, and find ways to bend it. The Jedi. Their strikes. He can have this kind of interesting multi-weapon play style. You can do an attack where you pull out a holographic hammer and you hit him with the hammer, and then you can pull out some holographic guns and you shoot them with the guns. In the process, they build up heat within themselves. They stay too long in this kind of heated mode. Very Tron. And eventually explode. The idea of bending light to be your weapon, I think, is really cool. That is pretty damn cool, I will admit. Yeah. Elite specializations are a really fun way for us to explore different ways to play the same character. Like they Scarlet, push the yeah. Balance of what they've done before. You get to choose how your character exists in the world, what they do, how they do it, and these elite specializations allow you another step in customizing the character to meet that end. Interesting. Damn, they end these videos so very suddenly. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> There's something for everybody. That's the cool thing about Guild Wars. There's so many damn, you know, combinations of uh, ways to play. I like how WoW stole this game Sky Scales. Oh, you mean the Dragonflight thing? Yeah, it's fine. I'm, I, I'm honestly not bugged by that at all. I, I don't care. Yeah, the, the mechanics of... Uh, those flying mounts, Sky Scales and Griffins, are not exactly, you know, new to Guild Wars either. I've seen them in video games. Spyro the Dragon, for crying out loud, has that. Kala is the granddaughter of a Guild Wars 1 character. It's lore between the games. In between the games. Okay. Did they retroactively, you know, added her into the game in Path of Fire? Or has she been around a lot longer than that? She has been around. She has butted around. I see. Okay. There will be a lot of lore linking Guild Wars 2 to Guild Wars 1 and Path of Fire. Yeah, that seems to be the the theme. Season 3 and Path of Fire is a lot of stuff from Guild Wars 1. We didn't get uh, we didn't get a whole lot of that until now because they've been uh, focusing so much on the Silvari and the Silvari are were the the new hot thing, right? <laughs> 